Y'all, hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. We have a lot to do today, y'all, so while I get settled and get set up, y'all go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. Y'all, we gotta talk. Look at all these books. All right, so let me tell you. These have been coming in the mail for the past, I don't even know how long. I feel like no matter how long I say, somebody's gonna be like, you got that many books in that short a period of time? So we'll just say in the past five years, all these books have come to my house. <laughs> I know we know that's not true. Anyway, so I've just been setting them aside and waiting so that we could unpackage them all together. So get you a beverage. I have the scissors, so let's get to work. Let's, I was gonna say, should we start with the big ones or like the singlets? Let's just start at one end and work our way to the other end and see what in the world we have here. Cause y'all, honestly, I think I ordered some of these so long ago, I don't remember what's in them. So let's see, this feels like a bunch. A lot of these are the, you know how where you order used books online and they're like buy two, get one free or buy three, get one free. Y'all know I'm a sucker for those. It's like a dare. I dare you to buy three books and get one free. And I'm always going to take a dare. So let's see what we got. Bag number one. Oh, you know what? Let's also see if we can figure out which book I meant to get and which ones I just sort of surreptitiously backed my way into. All right. Red, white, and royal blue was an intentional buy. So this is a rom-com. I think these two boys rom-com together. True love isn't always diplomatic. I don't think I know anything about this book except that folks like it. So this was an intentional buy. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is the first in a series, the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. This was an intentional buy. This is, I think it's young adult, not middle grades young adult, but young adult. And I think it's a girl gets murdered and then maybe they solve the murder, but then like teenagers decide they're gonna solve the murder. Y'all, I love when teenagers solve a murder because it's the most like preposterous thing ever. Like the way that they put clues together makes no sense. And I love that. So, Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Red, White, and Royal Blue were two intentionals. Oh, this was kind of intentional too. It's the, um, it's the City of Ashes. It's the second book I got, was it City of Bones, City of Glass, City of, City of Bones. I got City of Bones in a used book haul and which I haven't read yet. So why not get number two in a series when I haven't read book one yet? I know, right? So I did. So that's sort of, okay, it wasn't intentional, but it was there, so I got it. One Perfect Summer was the buy three, now you gotta find another book in this virtual pile of books to make your buy three, get one free. One Perfect Summer, no idea, but look, it's a, look how beachy it looks. Yeah, I don't know, no idea, but we got it, so. So that's our first four. That bag felt bigger. I was afraid that was going to be an eight. Because sometimes when you do a buy four, get one, or buy three, get one free, and then you do another buy three, get one free soon after that from the same store, they like put your stuff together so you get eight in a bag. And y'all, when the intern checks the mail that day before I get out there to get my like bucket of books, it's not pretty. Oh yeah, okay. Here's another glimpse into the into the madness. First, let's talk about these. Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. These are Lee Bardugo. Lots of folks who love fantasy love Lee Bardugo. Y'all, I don't know why I'm obsessed with liking fantasy because I don't dislike it. I just don't read it, but I feel like people sound so cool when they talk about reading fantasy. I'm gonna read fantasy. So I think we talked about, I got Six of Crows and I started reading it a little bit. I wouldn't even call it started reading. I was literally on like page three, but it took me two days. Maybe it was like page 10. 
It took me like two days to read 10 pages and I was like, I have no idea what I'm reading. Well, come to find out there's a trilogy that comes before the Six of Crows books. I think Six of Crows is a duology, Six of Crows and then something else. And they say that you don't have to have read the Shadow and Bones trilogy before you read the Six of Crows duology. But y'all, seriously, I've read a lot of books and I've even read, I've read boring books. I've read confusing books. I've read hard books. I could not get past page 10 or the 10th page of Six of Crows. Cause I'm like, what are these words? What is this place? What are you even talking about? So I'm gonna read, it's not called the Shadow and Bones trilogy. It's called the, the Grisha verse. I don't even know, but the Grisha verse trilogy, which these are two of them, Shadow and Bone and Siege and Storm. Again, why just buy the first book in a series and test it out when you can go whole hog and buy the first two books? I don't know why I didn't buy the first three books. They probably just didn't have it. Anyway, so that's these, Lee Bardugo. And it's fun to say Bardugo. So then, now here's where you get a a little glimpse into the madness. So we talked on another video and y'all, I'm gonna have to get out of the habit of saying linked in this video because now I think on the YouTubes, when you link a video, it links down below. So, which is a better idea anyway. So I'll link down below the video where I talk about where to find cheap and free eBooks because let me tell you what happens. We might've talked about this before. I will get an email hang on i need a beverage for this so i will get my pixel of ink or book bub or whatever it is email and i'll find an ebook on there that i want to read well y'all know that i like to like sit on the couch with a physical book and read the book and then read the ebook like on the peloton bike or in the bed or like sitting in the line at the walmart i want to read the ebook but i like having physical books so it's very common that I will find like a free or a 99 cent ebook and then want to go and find the physical book of said ebook. And that brings us to Serpent and Dove. I don't know anything about this, but look how cool the cover is. This isn't even the... the Y'all, seriously. So, this is the first book in, I believe, a trilogy. And again, what's our motto? Why only buy the first book in a trilogy when you haven't read the book and know nothing about a trilogy, when you can buy the first and second books? Here's what happened. What happened was, this book was on, like, BookBub or Pixel Inc. or something, Somebody help me out. Y'all probably saw it and went, oh, I don't have book one. I haven't read book one, so I'm not going to buy that book. I believe this is book two. Yeah, because it says New York Times bestselling author of Serpent and Dove. So book two, <laughs> book two was a cheapy ebook. So then I got book one. Now, y'all, when I read book one, I'm going to have to buy the ebook. I know. So Serpent and, Dove, Serpent and Dove and Blood and Honey, and I think it's a trilogy. So then we're gonna have to get the third. Let's just move on. Ooh, let's do a big one. Oh, all right, this is a double four, so it's an eight stack. And here's what we got. So it started with this whole thing started with the bookish life of Nina Hill. This was a pixel of ink or book bub, one of those either cheapy or freebie books. And I think, so obviously she's very bookish, Nina Hill. Something has, so she's like a bookish, works in a bookstore, library, something. And something happens and she has to actually go out in the 3D world, like somebody dies or she something happens in and her life gets turned all upside down so okay i don't really know much about it but look how cute and look how bookish she looks so that started this at least one of these piles of books i have avoided that like actively avoided this book because it looks amazing and horribly sad because it's about a girl who 
learns to read during the, I believe it's the Nazi regime in Nazi Germany. So she ends up stealing books from Nazi book burnings. Y'all, seriously, who even wants to drag themselves through this? But we're gonna, we're gonna read the book Thief. I read a Nora Roberts book over the summer and didn't love it. I didn't, well, no, that's not true. I did not like it. Um, but I want to read another one of her books and see what I really think. So I checked reviews, checked like Goodreads and all the places you look to see who likes what. And The Witness, I mean, all of Nora Roberts' books are like well received. They, they have good ratings. So, but The Witness was a really good, really well rated. No idea what it's about. But it's a Nora Roberts. So guessing there's some kind of conflict and then some kind of like cheesy, like moderately steamy stuff. I think that's what I didn't like about it was the cheesy, moderately steamy stuff. But anyway, I'm gonna give this one a shot and see what happens. Lucy Foley, The Hunting Party. Remember I read The Wedding Guest? Wedding List, The Wedding List. Whatever it was, The Wedding on the Island in Australia or wherever. Um, that was her, right? Please tell me I did not. Yeah, The Guest List. And I really liked it. Well, The Hunting Party is one of hers. So I wanted to read another one of hers and see what I thought. Remember that the guest list was slow. And I liked it, but a lot of people don't like it because it's so slow. Um, so I'm going to read The Hunting Party and see what I think. The Vanishing Half is about a set of twins. And I believe they're African-American. And either they're both light-skinned or one of them's light-skinned. And I believe the light-skinned one passes for white. And it's about, it's about that. So, The Vanishing Half. I'm very intrigued by this book. The Things We Do for Love, Kristen Hanna. Y'all, y'all have heard me say this before. Kristen Hanna writes books. Okay, let, hang on. Let me start that all over again. I have read, have I, I think I've read three Kristen Hanna books. Two of them were so sad, they rearranged my molecules. Like, so sad. Like, and in both of those books, here's what happens. You're humming right along, and then something sad happens, and you get through it, because it's not really all that sad. And then you're like, okay, well, I'm all right, I got this. And then you get to the Kristen hanna part of the book where it just blows you apart at a molecular level. That happened to me twice. And then because I'm sadistic, I read a third Kristen Hanna book and there's no Kristen hanna in it at all. Like the, something happens, I mean, and it, it was sad, but in this book, the sad thing that happened had already happened. So you learn about it in hindsight, like it had happened to this character and affected her gravely, but you don't go through it with her. And that's like, that's what Kristen Hanna does to you. She drags you through these things with her characters. So because you didn't go through this with the character, it wasn't a true Kristen hanna -ing. So y'all, I read through that entire book on a tack, just waiting to get blown apart and it never happened. So now I'm two, like of my three Kristen Hanna books, two of them destroyed me. And then one of them was like, okay, I can do this. So I got The Things We Do For Love. Y'all, even the title for heaven's sake. Um, so we'll see what happens here. It looks, it, I don't know anything about this book, but does that look, can, is that focusing? Does that look to y'all like a mother and daughter? Oh my Lord Jesus, I'm already in over my head if it's something happens with a mother. No, sir. That, mm -mm. All right. Anyway. Things we never get over, y'all. This is wet. Good Lord. I didn't realize this was a tome. This is, oh, 550 pages. Lucy score. I know nothing about it except that I keep seeing it come up all over the place and some folks hate it. And then I heard somebody say that it was a rom-com with like some kind of like abusive relationships going on or something. I think it's available on Kindle Unlimited. So obviously I bought this for, I don't know, a couple, three bucks. 
But, um, oh, that's what it was. It's like the rom-com version of the Shatter Me series. That's what I heard somebody say, and Shatter Me. Y'all, this is one of those, people love it or hate it because of, apparently it's a pretty, like, abusive relationship. There are three or four of these. Like, I don't know, Shatter Me, Heal Me, Abuse Me, Drag Me Down the Road, whatever it is. But yeah, that's what I heard was that this is like the, a rom-com version of Shatter Me. So is any of what I just said even true? Y'all, who knows that? Y'all, speaking of Kindle Unlimited, I want to take a quick little intermission and tell y'all, I'm sure many people have already seen this, but Kindle Unlimited is going from $9.99 to $11.99 a month. So if you have Kindle Unlimited and you like Kindle Unlimited, look and see if you have the offer where you can prepay for nine or 12 months of Kindle Unlimited at the current price of $9.99. So if you do that, you'll stay on the $9.99 plan until like the end of your prepaid period and then it goes to $11.99 a month. Now, you're locked in, right? Once you prepay it, then you have Kindle Unlimited for that amount of time. And if you're in a freebie period, like right now I'm on a three months free because I bought a new Kindle, at the end of my three months, then the beginning of my prepaid period starts. So just check out your Kindle Unlimited if you have it or if you want it, look at it, um, and just see if that works for you. All right, back to the books. Let me get a stack of these singlets. and see what we got. All right, let's see what we got here. Walking on trampolines is, I think this one's about these two girls, Lulu and Annabelle maybe, and they, grow up together and something happens to one of them and changes her life and then some kind of story unfolds. I don't really know. When These Mountains Burn is about a man fighting to save his son from addiction. And I don't really know anything about it other than that he feels like the law doesn't do enough. I don't know. That's all I remember reading. But of course the law doesn't do enough. So like how heartbreaking is even the thought of a parent fighting to save their child from addiction? Slider, why do I feel like we've already talked about this? So this is middle grades. This might be young middle grades. I got this to teach um, a book club this summer. It's about a boy who accidentally spends like $2,000 of his mama's money on an app or something and then decides that he's going to win a hamburger or slider or something eating contest because the there's a money prize and that's how he's going to pay her back. Vicious is the first book in a duology. Y'all look, I did not buy the whole duology. I only bought one of the books. It's by V.E. Schwab who wrote The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Y'all know how I loved Addie LaRue. I love Addie LaRue. I loved the book. I love Addie. I've been afraid to read another V.E. Schwab book because of how much I love Addie LaRue. So I bought this. I'm going to consider it for a while. Not like I'm considering my next Richard Bachman book after Beartown. That's a whole different kind of heartbreak and considering. But I'm going to consider this for a while and then I'm going to read it. The editor is by Stephen Rowley, who wrote Gunkle, or The Gunkle, remember Gunkle, about the gay uncle who ends up having to take his brother's kids for the summer because his best friend, who was his brother's wife, passed away, and brother had to go into rehab, so the Gunkle has to take the kids. And I loved the story, and I hated the audible performance. Well, this is by him. And I don't know anything about it, but I'm going to read it and see what I think. The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry is about this dude who retires and he and his wife are like getting on each other's nerves or maybe he's getting on her nerves. Somebody's getting on somebody's nerves in the house and he gets a letter from a friend of his from whom he has not heard in decades and she's like in hospice or something finna die and so he writes back quickly, you know, she writes him a goodbye, you know, like whatever last goodbye, whatever. So he writes her back and he walks down to the letterbox to drop it off and realizes when he drops off the letter that he needs to deliver this message in person. So then he just starts walking to go and that's his unlikely pilgrimage is that he's walking to go deliver the message to this lady. Tell the wolves I'm home. This is about a girl 
who is, it's like it's set in the 80s. She's kind of awkward and out of place, and her only friend was her uncle. And I don't know if we know the uncle was gay. I don't know why I feel like the uncle was gay or why I think that I know that. But he dies of either a mysterious illness or an illness that was mysterious to this, the, like, the niece. And y'all, again, I am making assumptions. I'm relying on facts, not in evidence, but I suspect the uncle died of AIDS because it was a mysterious illness in the 80s, and that's code for AIDS. But anyway, uncle dies, breaks her heart. She's lost and alone. I th and I think maybe it's the uncle's friend that she learns to trust and like helps her through her mourning. I don't know. A lot of that, I don't know why I think I know those things. But anyway, that's what I think I know about that book. All right, we're almost done. We got two more big bags. <laughs> this little buddy, <laughs> he's scared of bugs, y'all, and I think he just saw a bug. So he might need to sit with us for a little while. It's all right, buddy. It's all right. It's all right. Metropolis, I b excuse him, I believe is about six, oh yes, yeah, I'm going with six people because that's how many people you see on the cover. Six people who are connected some kind of random way, like they have their stuff stored in the same storage place or something, and it's about somehow there, I don't know, some strange connections between these people. But y'all, it's got great reviews, so I don't know anything about it. Love in other words, Christina Lauren. Y'all know I'm trying to like Christina Lauren. So I have a bunch of Christina Lauren's books. Now I'm going to pick one and I'm going to read it so I can like Christina Lauren because everybody but me likes Christina Lauren. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Marissa Meyer writes a bunch of those, y'all, you can see them here, the fairy tale retellings. So I believe this is a fairy tale retelling. Queen of Hearts, maybe? I don't know. I'll read it and let you know. It's really pretty though, look. Again, Rachel is about a woman who struggled in the past, maybe went to rehab, got her stuff together, and then a man from the past comes back into her life and threatens to just, okay, I don't really know, but I think somehow him being back in her life like kinda upsets her apple cart. So that's the Again Rachel, like, here we go again, Rachel. So that's Again Rachel. And y'all, we're on our last bag of books. Bo, you gotta move, buddy. Y'all, this dog. Oh, all right. I think y'all know how much I love Mary Kay Andrews. Well, I'm starting my pile of books to read for Christmas. Blue Christmas and Christmas Bliss are, I believe they are, yes. These are Wheezy books. Y'all know Wheezy and Bebe, right? Um, if you don't, y'all gotta get to know Wheezy and Bebe, the Savannah Blues books. But these are some Christmas Wheezy and Bebe books. So I had to get those. I just remembered that I like Susan Mallory. Y'all know that whole drama that I read a bunch of books. I think it was last Christmas. And there were two authors, one that I liked, one that I did not like, and I couldn't remember which was which. Well, then I figured out that Susan Mallory I did like. So I got The Boardwalk Bookshop, which I'm guessing is something about a bookshop on a boardwalk. I'll let you know. Kristen Higgins, I've read a couple of her books and listened to some of her stuff on Freebie Audible. Y'all, we didn't even talk about Freebie Audible on when we talked about free and reduced price ebooks, but I've listened to some of her stuff. If you have an Audible subscription, then you should have Freebie stuff on Audible. Her books, some of her books are in there. Go find you one, they're really good. So I got this. I don't think I know anything about it. Oh, Stealing Home. Do y'all know the show Steel Magnolias on Netflix? I'm not a huge fan of the show, but I think I'm not a huge fan of the show because the Southern accents are, to me, are so bad. But I wanna try the book and see if I like the book. So, and the book's always better than the shows and the movies. So Stealing Home is the first one of those.
A Week at the Shore is something about the main character goes back to the, I think it's the family's beach house in Rhode Island for the first time in like 20 years. And there's some kind of scandal. Like she left because of scandal or she's going back because of scandal. And y'all, I love a scandalous beach read. So that's that. Um, Barbara Delinsky's A Week at the Shore. Dear Emmy Blue, I believe Emmy releases a balloon with her email on it. And somebody finds it and emails her back. I mean, there's more to it than that, but I think that's like the, the beginnings of the whole thing. Then She Was Gone, I believe follows a mother who lost, whose daughter like disappeared when she was, I don't know, 10 or something. And then the mom meets a man whose daughter reminds her of her daughter. And then like things ensue from there. I've heard that this, I think this is the book that I've heard is very disturbing. So I'm down. So I'll read this and let you know. And y'all, we have made it through. That pile of bags of books is now this pile of books that I now have to find something to do with. So I'm gonna go work on that. Y'all, as usual, let me know if you know anything about any of these books, if you read any of them, if there are any that you would recommend, and definitely if there are any that I should steer clear of, or even if there are any that you want me to start with, any ones that you want me to read and tell you about first. Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. If you made it this far, we're definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.